We begin tonight with breaking news. Fargo police are asking for your help in finding two missing teens who ran away from a group home with concerns now of the cold and the two not wearing warm clothes. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Krista Bame. Please say 14 year olds Haley Jones on the left of your screen and Shayna Higdom on the right ran away from a group home tonight not dressed properly for the weather. They were last seen by a passerby around 730 near the Main Avenue train tracks heading north near 14th Street. Both girls have brown hair and might be wearing orange sweatshirts that were taken from the group home. If you have any information about where the girls are, please call 701-235-4493. Also developing tonight, crews are on scene of an accident after someone appears to have crashed through a person's yard and knocked out a light pole. State Patrol, West Fargo Police and the Sheriff's Department are all on scene at 47th Avenue and 52nd Street in West Fargo. No other information was released on scene, but stick with Valley News Live for all the updates. A new terror recruitment video hits close to home, calling out young Minnesota men who left and died fighting for terrorists. The 50-minute video released this weekend features men from the Twin Cities. It also shows Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump and for the first time, a call to American blacks to join their cause. Nina Moni talked to some Somali leaders, one who is a relative of a young man in the video who died fighting for Al-Shabaab. I brought him here with his family at the age of five or four. Once full of hopes and dreams for his nephew. He was honorary student, he was A student at Roosevelt. These young men could not afford to just sit and watch. Abdi B, he calls the newest Al-Shabaab video featuring Burhan Hassan, among other young people from the Twin Cities, a slap in the face. Ironically, he was killed uh, a year later after uh, about his graduation time. Since 2008, Behe has worked to stop other young men and women from becoming radicalized. Our young people who we were fortunate enough to bring them from refugee camps and who were born or grew up here had this first world education. All these opportunities, no matter what the challenges are, could be brainwash and take him back to the hellfire. He says the video aims to recruit, but also to divide through the terrorists' most far-reaching weapons, fear. Their whole target is our mainstream community, to be afraid of us. Fellow community activist Omar Jamal agrees the video is unlike anything he's seen before. It also aims to recruit American blacks, along with Muslims, after high-profile police shootings. So ISIL and Al-Shabaab put fear in the hearts of people to be afraid from their own government. Both men say working together with government officials and fellow Minnesotans is key to stopping radicalization among youth. We need to address the social inequity in our communities and uh, we need to empower our young people. The FBI says more than two dozen Somali Americans from the Twin Cities have already been lured to training camps overseas. The Clay County Sheriff's Department is investigating after oxygen and acetylene tanks were stolen at the Steam Threshers reunion site in Rolog. Authorities say an employee noticed tracks that looked odd and later found that the oxygen and acetylene tanks had been taken. The two can be used together to make a torch. The department says the tanks may have been gone for a few days already. More information is expected Monday on how a 19-year-old died after his body was found inside a vehicle on the UND campus. An officer was called to the parking lot near Berkeley Drive for an unresponsive man around 12.30 Saturday afternoon. The officer arrived to find the man, who is not a student, inside the vehicle and unresponsive. His name has not been released. UND police say there is no cause for concern for anyone's safety, but if you have any information, call the UND police department. After Monday, the next time you call a cab from Lucky 7 Taxi Service in Fargo, it may cost you more. The business is asking the Fargo City Commission to raise rates because it says the way it is now, their drivers just can't make it. The cab company says the cost of living increases and the abundance of companies in Fargo is what's causing the hike, one they haven't changed since 2008. 
And also tomorrow, an ordinance that would allow alcohol to be served in Marcus theaters faces its first reading. The idea of having a beer while you sit back and enjoy a movie doesn't seem to sit well with some commissioners. Both Dave Pepcorn and Melissa Sobolik have voiced their concerns, questioning if it's the right fit for Fargo and just how it would be handled in such a large family-oriented environment. Commissioner Williams has said he's not thrilled about the idea either, but would like more discussion. Numbers from 2015 show that there's a huge demand for animal shelters in North Dakota. It's reported that the Bismarck Mandan impound facility took in 867 stray or lost animals, which is up by more than 200 from the previous year. The pound was also forced to euthanize 6% of its animals, a percentage police say is normal in a year. The Central Dakota Humane Society sheltered 322 animals in 2015. Locally in the Fargo-Moorhead area, shelter owners say these numbers are not unexpected. I'm never surprised by the amount of dogs and cats looking for homes in our area. It's, it's a tragedy that so many are, are in need and that, you know, it's, it's an uphill battle. The dog featured in this piece is a husky named Nicholas. He's currently ready to take home at For Love of Dog Rescue in Moorhead. And to find the extended report or to find out more about dogs at this shelter in need of a home, just go to valleynewslive.com and click on this story. We're often caught looking down at our phones. It's a distraction that turned deadly for one man in California, but he wasn't driving. Walking while texting has become such a problem in recent years that the National Safety Council included distracted walking injuries as a category in their injury report. Valley News Team's Jovana Simic caught up with some locals and breaks down numbers that just may surprise you. We all know the dangers of texting and driving, but how about texting and walking? I never knew that it could actually injure someone, so I guess that would make me think twice about staying out of people's way. The textrians, people who text while walking, have gotten a lot of attention. The number of injuries has gone from fewer than 500 in 2000 to more than 2000 in 2011. ER visits have doubled to more than 1,500. Kids are, they seem to have phones in their hands at all times, so it just seems to be natural for them to be texting while they're walking. You know, a lot of times you see them glance up, but it's, it's just like driving a car and texting at the same time. It's just, you can't concentrate on what you're actually supposed to be doing. But it's not just kids. According to the National Safety Council, 54% of those injured from walking and texting are 40 and older. Living in a tech-savvy world, we may think we can multitask, but texting and walking has proven otherwise. You have to pay attention to the other people who are texting while they're walking because they absolutely are not paying attention to where they're going. Just like texting and driving, you only have to take your eyes off the road for a split second for something to go wrong. Yovana Simic, Valley News Live. Sprains and concussions are the most common injuries from texting and walking. More than 50% of distracted walking injuries happen in our own homes.